you know, firefighters, cops, ambulance personnel, we run towards the gun battle. We run into the burning building. We run towards the danger while everybody else is trying to escape. I knew in high school that I wanted to become a police officer. If you'd ask my wife, she'd tell you I was that kind of person. I wanted to make a difference. From the day they walk into law enforcement, they enter probably one of the most caustic work sites on the face of the earth. What officers see in, a, in the course of their career, uh, civilians and people who are not police will never see the, the horror that, that they experience. We respond to many calls, some of which give us a front row seat to what will be the worst moments in people's lives. And we will also bear witness to the evil and darker side of humanity, where nightmares exist. I saw a lot through, through my career. Um, never really thought about the things that I saw. Dealt with, you know, rollover collisions where people were ejected. Child deaths were, were the hardest. And, you know, doing CPR on a child for 20 minutes. I can remember one night walking down train tracks where a guy had stepped in front to commit suicide and we walked down and uh, the sergeant was with me, said, Rick, look at your boots. And I had pretty deep lug boots and I had body parts and intestines up in my boots. And when you tell people that, it seems surreal that we, we just, we didn't even think anything about it. We went back and hosed them off out of our boots, but uh, there was this mentality that you needed to be tough about it. And there's this whole different culture in, in police work. It's all part of the job. It becomes a way of life. We quickly realize that we can't think too much about it. And if it bothers us, we can't say anything. Not even to our brother or sister who is right there with us. Stuff it down. Move on. We have to stay tough and see it through. Everything that I've worked for, everything that was important, everything that I thought I could do was screwed up. The, the visions were still there. The flashbacks were too vivid. The nightmares were horrible. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I was on edge. I couldn't even think about going anywhere near the, the scene of the shooting. I couldn't even talk about it. And I didn't realize what he was going through. I didn't know. He, he didn't tell me, you know, about the nightmares, about the flashbacks. All I knew was all of a sudden my Rick was gone. You know, and he was just pissed all the time. And, you know, me and the kids spent a lot of years just walking on eggshells. Because we weren't sure what was going to set him off. My pot had boiled over. I had been through so much and seen so much in the 22 years uh, on the department that I, my, my pot was boiling over. I was fit to be tied. Post-traumatic stress disorder is, is really a, a problem for first responders, uh, specifically among police officers. About 15 to 18 percent of officers uh, in the United States have post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, there, there's an ethos among police officers that uh, uh, coming forward to get help might be a sign of weakness and that if I do that, uh, I might be looked down upon by my peers or by my supervisors. This is all part of the first responder culture. It is a growing problem amongst firefighters who battle the fires as they also watch the horrors unfold. EMTs, paramedics, as they fight to save lives when every second counts. Dispatchers who hear the screams and cries and are left never knowing what happens after the calls and correctional officers who must endure all that happens behind the walls of the prison stay man. It changes you. Officers who do get PTSD feel they've lost the support, that they've been betrayed by their department, that the department no longer cares about them. And, you know, this does nothing more than exacerbate the, the mental uh, problems that they're having with post-traumatic stress disorder. If I got shot in the leg, wouldn't you give me time to heal from that 
it's an injury. It, it's a service-connected disability. I'm service-connected. It's a disability, you know, but since it's PTSD, you know, I've got sick leave I could use. I have vacation I could use. You know, I'm not going to get any of that and maybe see if I'm making some progress or something like that. You know, it was just, no. You can resign or be terminated. I just felt like if I were to walk by any one of those guys, military, law enforcement, whatever, if I seen him on the ground, I would reach my hand out and I'd help him get up to his feet. And I just felt like not only did they not do that, it was almost like kicking me while I'm down. PTSD is a deadly, deadly mental health. Incorrectly handled, it can kill somebody in a heartbeat. What is it going to take to demand change in the first responder community? What is it going to take to get the conversation started? You gotta know that there's nothing wrong with you, that it's not dishonorable, that it's nothing to be ashamed of to come forward and, and share that. That it, we, we've let it be a shameful thing. They, they need to make officers aware right out of the gate, right from the academy of what can happen, of what they can expect, and that it, bad things are gonna happen and, and how you can cope with those better. No one ever told me when I started that some of the, that I was gonna see a lot of the stuff that I did. We recommend that once a year, the police officer um, go and talk to a therapist for emotional discharge. Now that's almost heret heretic talk. Um, it works. Uh, cops go to therapists now. Uh, they're not crazy. They're, they're individuals that have been exposed to things that most civilians wouldn't even they're incomprehensible what they see and hear. Deaths of kids and children and all this. But as it builds up and builds up and builds up, um, they need somewhere that's safe. They need somewhere that they can talk to someone who can help them get out of what they're in. And I try to look at everything as not so much post-traumatic stress disorder, but post-traumatic growth. Or I can use the things that I've learned to help other people, which helps me also deal with it and integrate it into my life daily. Um, they, the things you've been through never go away. They, they don't just disappear. And there might be things that come up that make you think about them, but it's how you deal with them at the time. 